Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's change of responsibility ceremony. Today, Command Sergeant Major Walter A. Tagalakun will relinquish responsibility of the United Nations Command, Republic of Korea, and the United States Combined Forces Command, and the United States Forces Korea to Command Sergeant Major Jack H. Love as a senior enlisted advisor of the command. Today, the command is especially pleased to welcome all distinguished visitors, senior civilians, and military leaders, past and present. Thank you all for being with us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the rendering of honors, the invocation, advancement of the colors, and the playing of the Republic of Korea and the United States national anthems. The United, United States Forces, Forces Korea, Korea Command Chaplain, Chaplain Colonel Chul W. Kim. Kim. Ladies, and Let us pray. pray. Almighty God, as we acknowledge your sovereign lordship, we give you honor and praise for your grace and mercy that we experience each day. Today we offer you special thanks as we witness on the milestone in UNC, CFC, and USFK. The change of responsibility between Command Sergeant Major Tagali Kud and Command Sergeant Major Love. We thank you for these two great leaders in our formation, authentic professionals who epitomize character, servant leadership, and selfless service to our nation. Bless Command Sergeant Major Tagali Kud, his wife Carolyn, and their children as they transition to another chapter of life. Guide them with a grace that is bigger than fear, anxiety, and the unknown combined. Grant Command Sergeant Major Love your spirit of wisdom and knowledge to provide even greater service to our formation. Let your will be known to him and be done through him. May his tenure be a blessing to us all. Bless his wife Cindy and their children as they continue to sacrifice for our nation. Keep all forces in Korea safe and strong to proudly preserve peace in the land of morning come. In your mighty and holy name, amen.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the United Nations Command, the Combined Forces Command, and United States Forces Korea, flowers are now being presented to Mrs. Caroline Tagalicude. She is presented with a bouquet of red roses as a token of affection and in thanks for the support she has shown the Republic of Korea and the United States soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, guardians, civilians, and families of the command. Red roses signify the bonds of loyalty and affection between the service members and families, and to signify our sorrow at their departure, she will be remembered and missed. Also, on behalf of the command, we extend our warmest welcome to Mrs. Cindy Love. She is presented with a bouquet of yellow roses, welcoming her to the unit. Yellow is the color of new beginnings and symbolizes her arrival. In time, Cindy's rosebuds will blossom, as will her relationships with the service members and their families. Ladies and gentlemen, General McCamera will now join Command Sergeant Major and Mrs. Tagalicude for the award presentation. The citation reads, the Distinguished Service Medal is presented to Command Sergeant Major Walter A. Tagalicude for exceptionally meritorious service from 1 February 2019 to 25 March 2022. While serving in various positions of increased responsibility over a 36-year career, culminating as a Command Sergeant Major of the United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and United States Forces Korea, Command Sergeant Major Tagalicude's stalwart leadership, relentless pursuit of excellence, an inspired vision contributed significantly to mission accomplishment. Command Sergeant Major Tagalicude's honorable and distinctive contributions to the defense of this nation reflect great credit upon him, the United States Forces Korea, and the United States Army. Signed, Joseph M. Martin, General, Vice Chief of Staff of the Army. At this time, Mr. Tagalicud will be presented with the Outstanding Public Service Award. The citation reads, the Outstanding Public Service Award is presented to Mrs. Caroline D. Tagalicud. Mrs. Caroline Tagalicud distinguished herself by outstanding public service and in recognition of her extraordinary contributions to the United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and United States Forces Korea from February 2019 to March 2022. During this period, Mrs. Tagalicud served relentlessly in caring for over 28,000 service members and their families. Mrs. Tagalicud's efforts enhanced both the morale and personal readiness during one of the most challenging periods on the peninsula since the Korean War. As such, Mrs. Tagalicud's contributions are not only enormous and expansive, they are also unique in the history of family readiness programs. Mrs. Tagalicud's unique, substantial, and significant contributions bring great credit upon her and the alliance between the Republic of Korea and the United States. The distinctive accomplishments of Mrs. Caroline Tagalicud reflect great credit upon herself, the Department of Defense. Given this 25th day of March 2022, signed Paul J. LaCamera, General, U.S. Army, Commanding. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we also recognize Command Sergeant Major Togalakud as he soon will transition into the Army for life ranks after 36 years of faithful service to our nation. For his sacrifice, the United States Army presents him with a small token of appreciation. This includes the United States flag, a certificate of appreciation signed by the President of the United States, the Soldier for Life retiree pen, and a certificate of retirement for having served faithfully and honorably in the armed forces for the United States of America, signed by the Army Chief of Staff, General James C. McConville.
Ladies and gentlemen, because no soldier can succeed without his family, General Lakaimra is now presenting Mrs. Tagalakud with a certificate of appreciation signed by the Chief of Staff of the Army in gratitude for her many years of devoted support to her husband so that he could support our nation. Throughout history, military forces have carried a banner or other emblem to serve as a symbol of unity and strength. Today, this time-honored tradition continues. The change of responsibility is a simple yet traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The key to the ceremony is the passing of the colors. The very soul of a military unit is symbolized in the colors under which it fights, for they represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unit of its soldiers. The custodian of the colors is the command sergeant major, who is a senior enlisted soldier in the unit and principal advisor to the commander. On June 25, 1950, North Korea breached the 38th parallel, invaded South Korea, and rolled back the lightly armed Republic of Korea Army Constabulary Forces towards their capital of Seoul. Two days later, on June 27, 1950, the UN Security Council passed Resolution 83 calling for UN member states to furnish assistance to the Republic of Korea to repel the North Korean armed attack. Determining that a more coordinated and collective security effort was necessary, the Security Council passed Resolution 84 on July 7, 1950, which called for the establishment of a unified command under the leadership of the United States with the authority to operate under the UN flag. The establishment of the United Nations Command in Tokyo on July 24, 1950, marked the first time in history that a multinational force unified under the auspices of the United Nations and met the challenge of wrongful aggression. This command became the home for all members providing military forces and other assistance. Throughout the course of the war, 22 UN member states made significant contributions to restore international peace and security in the Republic of Korea. These included combat forces, medical aid, and humanitarian assistance to alleviate the suffering of the Korean people during and after the war. With the formal cessation of hostilities in 1953, UNC became the executive agent charged with enforcing and maintaining the provisions of the Korean Armistice Agreement. In November 1978, Combined Forces Command replaced UNC as the Alliance Operational Warfighting Command. However, the United Nations Command has remained committed to its unique role as the guardian of the terms of the armistice until an effective and enduring mechanism is established which will ensure a lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula. At this time, General LaCamera, Command Sergeant Major Tagalakud, and Command Sergeant Major Love will move on to the field for the UNC change of responsibility and passing of the colors. Effective March 25, 2022, Command Sergeant Major Jack H. Love assumes responsibility in the duties as the Command Senior Enlisted Leader for United Nations Command. Signed, Paul J. LaCamera, General, U.S. Army, Commanding. The Rock U.S. Combined Forces Command, CFC, was established on November 7, 1978, and replaced UNC as the Alliance's Operational Warfighting Command. 
CFC is a separate binational military command that takes its mission, policy, guidance, and direction from the ROC U.S. Military Committee. In armistice, CFC plans, prepares, and trains to maintain the strong combined defense of the ROC. In the event of hostilities, CFC would command approximately 700,000 designated ROC and augmentation American forces and provide a coordinated defense through its combined ground, air, naval, marine, special operations, and information operations component commands. CFC is the heart of the ROC and U.S. alliance and reflects the mutual commitment of the Republic of Korea and the United States to maintain peace and security on the Korean Peninsula. Effective March 25th, 2022, Command Sergeant Major Jack H. Love assumes responsibility in the duties as the Command Senior Enlisted Leader for the Combined Forces Command. Signed, Paul J. La Camera, General, U.S. Army, Commanding. United States Forces Korea was established on July 1, 1957. USAK is a joint force headquarters which serves as the organizational foundation for the U.S. military commitment to the ROC. USFK is a sub-unified command of U.S. Indo-Pacific Command with a primary mission to ensure U.S. forces stationed in Korea are combat ready as a central pillar of the combined deterrent. In the event of hostilities, USFK would enable the combined forces command and the combined defense of the ROC. Major USFK units include the U.S. 8th Army, U.S. Air Forces Korea, U.S. Naval Forces Korea, U.S. Marines Forces Korea, and U.S. Special Operations Command Korea. USFK forces continue to serve on the forward edge of freedom in Korea as the physical manifestation of America's ironclad commitment to security and stability in the Republic of Korea, the region, and to a free and open Indo-Pacific. Effective March 25, 2022, Command Sergeant Major Jack H. Love assumes responsibility in the duties as the Command Senior Enlisted Leader for the United States Forces Korea. Signed, Paul J. La Camera, General, U.S. Army, Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and United States Forces Korea Commander, General Paul J. La Camera. Good morning. Anya Shimnika. Excellencies, representatives from the diplomatic corps, fellow general officers, flag officers, senior enlisted leaders, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, guardians, and civilians of the United Nations Command, 
Combined Forces Command and U.S. Forces Korea, thank you for joining us. Honor Guard, you look sharp. Eighth Army Band, superb as always. <clears throat> to the J3 crew who put this together, bravo Zulu. I want to thank all the family members represented here today by Carolyn and Cindy. Thank you. They know what it's like to lead and sustain a family through a long and demanding military career. Please join me in a round of applause for them. <clears throat> this is a special day for the TAG and Love families, the United Nations Command members, and the ROC U.S. Alliance. It's my distinct honor to preside over this event. The ceremony signifies the change of responsibility for this subunified command. There's a lot to talk about. I could go on for a really long time, although Star Major Tag has threatened a one-hour speech, so I won't cut into his time. But no, you really don't hope I do. Look, I know the deal. None of you came here to hear me speak. It's really about Star Major Tag, and we'll hear from him in a few minutes. First, I need to thank him for his exceptional service, three plus years of duty here in Korea, and for a 36 year trailblazing career. Today, we also welcome our new senior enlisted leader to our ranks, Sergeant Major Love. Sergeant Major Tag assumed responsibility on February 1st, 2019, and he never looked back. He got to know his people, then got down to business, and the results speak for themselves. He led and advised through unusually tough times of America's presence here in Korea. Consider what has defined Sergeant Major Tag's tenure. He was there for our personnel during the challenging period of the Special Measures Agreement. He was there for us during intense North Korean provocations. He's been here for us during COVID. He's provided a steady hand and superb example. And, was, and it was always with the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, guardians, and civilians foremost in his mind. So our Major, your military expertise and support has made a lasting impact across the region, and your service to this command has proven remarkable and unforgettable. Thank you. As one leader departs, another steps in. So our Major Love is coming to us from the G Ar U.S. Army G357. He's the right senior enlisted leader at the right time for us. It was an easy decision to choose you. So, Major Love, we know you and Cindy are ready to serve. We look forward to working with you. Congratulations and welcome to your family. This is also Sergeant Major Tag's retirement ceremony. He has taught, coached, mentored, probably tormented, and led thousands of young leaders over three and a half decades. Were you ever screaming eagle? Have you ever served in the center of the universe? Have you ever climbed to glory? If you have, then chances are that one of the senior non-commissioned officers in your formation is a product of Sergeant Major Tag. The acorns don't fall far from the mighty oak. What an incredible legacy. You, you take a look at that bio that's in the program. It's a warrior's path. He's been there, done that. Sergeant Major Tag may be highly decorated, but he's always humble. When Private Tag entered the service a long time ago, American culture was a little bit different. Mike Tyson had just won his first professional heavyweight boxing champion championship. Okay, that's the guy who's in those movies now, right? But at one point he was a formidable fighter. <laughs> Cell phones were the size of cinder blocks. <laughs> the Chicago Bears had just crushed the New England Patriots at Super Bowl 20. That was six Super Bowl championships ago, so. As you've often heard me say, they get paid at King's Ransom to play a child's game. And Sergeant Major Tag, you've led and served in the ultimate contact profession. He'd go on to serve as Division Corps and Subunified Command Sergeant Major. For his great success, Sergeant Major Tag became known as the Manny Pacquiao of the Army. Not bad for a young man from a small town in the Philippines. Sergeant Major Tag is an inspiration to many across our ranks. We can learn from his career that if you take the time to dedicate yourself to the profession of arms, to learn and grow, then you will be successful in your job. Do that and you will help make your team successful. So our Major Tag now has to decide what he's gonna do for the rest of his life. He'll have more time to watch football. He's a longtime Broncos fan. At least he's headed 
Good luck with that. At least he's headed to Florida where they do have pretty good football team. Or so I'm told. If football doesn't work out, then at least he'll have plenty of time for golf. I've often heard Sir Major Tag speak fondly and with deep gratitude of his family, his wife Carolyn, his daughters Melanie and Stephanie, grandson Carter, his mother Dee, and his father Rick, who served 27 years in the military, sister Sheila, and his late brother Chris. I bet you already have golf club picked out for your grandson. There's nothing like being a grandfather. Fill them up with sugar, then send them back to their parents for phases four and five of the operation. General George Patton once said, it's better to fight for something than to live for nothing. So our major tag, you've lived for something special. You have fought for it many times over. You've soldiered more than you're sure of the task, 100% and then some. Enjoy your retirement, your freedom, Ranger. You've earned it. In closing, thank you again for joining us today. It's always good to see a gathering of strong leaders and disciplined troopers. I trust that each of you is ready to fight tonight. Never forget that we are here, are all duty bound to shoulder our sacred task to fight and win on the most dangerous piece of ground, the one last 100 meters of land, air, and sea. We accomplish that by working together. As a multinational combined joint force, thanks for all you do every day for the U.S. Rock Alliance. God bless our great nations. God bless you all. Under one flag, Kachi Kachi Da, fight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Walter A. Tagalakud. Anyo Hashminika Pangab Samida. Good morning. Good morning. Oh man, that was weak. We got to try that again. Good morning. Good morning. That's awesome. General Camera, thank you for those kind words, sir. Excellencies, representatives from the diplomatic corps, general and flag officers, senior enlisted leaders, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and especially our families and friends from Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us today. Let me say to the 8th Army Band, you always add a touch of class in every event. And to the Honor Guard, you all look sharp. Thank you, you make this event memorable. Some of your heroes and all the setup crew that's been working on this for about a couple months now, you made this happen and thank you, job well done. A special thank you goes out to General Abe Abrams and Connie it was them who asked Carolyn and me to come to Korea, and we are so grateful for that opportunity. I want to especially, rec especially recognize the military spouses and families. Being in a military family often means missing your soldier, your airman, your sailor, your marine, or your guardian. Knowing that your loved one is, is away from home doing his or her part to support the greatest military of the history of the world. It is something to be proud of. Your unconditional love and support is a big part of why they, we, have been successful in the military. Never forget that you, as a family member, have supported them. You have also done so, uh, done your part in a con to contribute to something much larger than yourselves. Please join me in a round of applause for our family members and their spouses. I want to especially recognize my wife, Carolyn. For 35 years we have been together, Carolyn has been my best friend, my bedrock, my motivator, my inspiration, and my boss. <laughs> she has been by my side from my initial enlistment in the Army to my retirement. God has truly blessed me with the best partner. 
Over the three and a half decades of our service, she has volunteered hundreds of hours in Army programs, USO, and family, family readiness groups. She has mentored many senior enlisted spouses at the pre-command course and nominative leader course. Caring for families was, her, was priority for her. During my combat deployment, she expertly managed the household. And she did all this while balancing her own career and volunteering. She always made me, she always made time to ensure our daughters came first. Carolyn attended their sporting events, dance competition, helped with prom, attended high school graduation, sent them off to college, attend college graduation, and witnessed the birth of our grandson, Carter. This is only a fraction of what she has done for me, my immediate family, and our great military family. I could not have made it to this level without her personal sacrifices for our family. Carolyn, thank you for your unyielding love and endless support for many years together. And our next focus is us and our families. Please kindly join me in a round of applause for my beautiful bride, Carolyn. For more than three years, my experience here in Korea has revealed that we are the premier and most powerful, lethal, ready combined joint force in the planet. UNC, CFC, USFK is a disciplined, trained, mentally tough force that is ready to fight tonight and win. That is due to the great service members of all three commands. And even though I am departing, I know that this resp responsibility for the security and stability of Peninsula is in good hands. When I think about the United Nations Command, I think of how the UN's first collective security mission and the oldest of three commands. I think about how UNC's support of the Comprehensive Military Agreement has encompassed so much no-fail projects, all of which were of historical importance. Projects that include the demilitarization of the JSA and the observation and validation of guard post dismantlement and the demining of Arrowhead Hill. Tasks that remind us that there were that we're stronger together in the endeavor of, of the ultimate contact profession. UNC's mission is truly one of the international significance. But on top of that, I think even more of the great leaders, such as Vice Admiral Mayer and Major General Toy, and now Lieutenant General Harrison, and all of their staff. I'm so grateful to all of them and for what their service members have done for the mission. When I think about Combined Forces Command, there's a lot that comes to mind. I think about how we have strengthened our alliance through personal relationships and through mutual respect and moral courage and cultural understanding. Ham Kehan, Chiahun, Sojong Hamnida, Kamsamida. I think about how we have continued to secure the region and protect our homeland. I know that when we say Kachi Kapshida, our adversaries know that we mean business. So when, you're all out, so when you're all out there working hard to maximize your unit and individual readiness at, at Echelon day and night, across all services in conjunction with our rock allies, you know that our readiness is irreplaceable, imperative here in Korea. In the great land of the morning calm, we remain an armistice, which by definition is only a temporary cessation of hostilities. But on top of that, I think even more of the great people, such as Deputy CFC Commander, General Kim Sung-kyum, and the entire hardworking CFC staff. I'm also grateful for the ROC, SEAC, and his component sergeants major and their subordinate senior enlisted leaders. In the last year, in the last three years, the ROC and U.S. senior enlisted leaders have strengthened the alliance by conducting annual events such as Keystone, Mangadai, Backbone University, senior NCO leader development, and staff rides. I'm especially thankful for the friendship and leadership of CAC Oh Moon Soon, CFC Rock, CFC Rock CSM Lee Young Q, and the former Rock CFC retired Command Sergeant Major Kim Jusik for being my counterparts during my service in Korea. I want to thank their spouses Yerin, Jam Young, and Unsuk for taking good care of Carolyn. Woriye, Wojongi, Youngwa Hakirul, Kewan Hamnida. When I think about the U.S. forces Korea, I think about how you've mastered the fundamentals of joint war fighting that are unique to Korea and become recognized experts in your prospective fields. 
in place where the terrain is tough and the threats are vast, you've lived our philosophy of readiness. You've ensured our components are all prepared and that they all embody the warrior ethos all day, every day. And so I know you're ready to fight the good fight. I know that you have a strong and diverse team. You matter, and every service member matters. I'm grateful for what each of you has done. This is also true for what you've done to strive to make Korea an assignment of choice. Our service members, civilians, and their families can see your hard work. I've watched you as you embrace command sponsorship, ensure ready access to quality medical care, and cut through the red tape. On top of all that, I, I think even more of great people such as Major General Sullivan and his US, USFK staff who expertly row hard every day. I, think, I thank our component commanders who are the arrows in the quiver. And I was truly inspired to watch the masterful leadership of General Abrams and General Cameron. Over the last three years, I've been fortunate to be surrounded by our very own component command senior enlisted leaders and their spouses. From 8th Army, Command Sergeant Major Cobb and Schmidt, from 7th Air Force, Chief Dyer and Hudson, from MAR-4K, Sergeant Major Faust, and the special sauce, Salcedo. From CNFK, Command Master Chief Tempa and Dechi, from SOC Corps, Command Sergeant Major Nauman, and Command Master Chief White and Beamer, from 2ID, Command Sergeant Major Carnes, and Command Sergeant Major Barreto, and from 19th, 19th ESC, Command Sergeant Major Peters and Green. I know of no others more professional than them, and I thank them for making my job easy. Together, we will continue to pursue our most sacred trust to prepare our service members to fight tonight and win on the most dangerous distance, the last 100 meters of land, sea, or air. As I stepped out, Command Sergeant Major Jack Love is stepping in. Command Sergeant Major Love, congratulations. USFK welcomes you and Cindy to the big league. Command Sergeant Major Love and I, have known, and I have known each other for many years. He is the perfect senior enlisted advisor for this position. I know Command Sergeant Major Love is glad to be back with the troops. He gets me when I say the only thing that service members really deserve is good leadership. Now, as I retire, many are wondering, what's next? I've heard some say, I can't, he, I can't believe he joined in 1986. Yes, I have boots older than most first sergeants. I joined in the Army uh, in a different time. I came from a period that, I came from a, from a period in the Army where if you broke a bone, instead of going to the doctors, just take a knee, drink water, and change your socks. Those were the old days when ruck marches were uphill, both ways. <laughs> and the Army issued a half a tent. General Cameron had the other half, so we don't get wet at night. And we had an extra phase in Ranger School, back when the Army was hard. That all seemed like a good time at the time, but I recently changed my mind during my VA physical. In 1986, Ronald Reagan was president. There was no internet, no email, no iPhone. That was good times back then. The average cost of a new house was $89,430. The average price of a new car was $9,255. And get this, a gallon of gas was 89 cents. Uh-huh. Yep, those days are long gone. The Boston Celtics won the NBA championship, but it took over 20 years to get it back. Halley's Comet had just visited our solar system. And the next time it will be seen will be in 2061. I'm, I hope I'm still around for that. And the reason and inspiration for my joining the Army can be found from one of the great movies that year, one of the greatest movie of all times, Rambo, First Blood. <laughs> it's classic, at least, at least to me. On, to, on the subject of movies, the movie Top Gun, starring Tom Cruise, debut. And if you you're too young, don't worry. They came out with a sequel. 
You see, my passion has always been to be around warfighters, our service members. Perhaps later, I'll pursue, I'll pursue another career that will continue to support them. But first, I will enjoy my family and spoil my grandson. We share the same passion, just like General LeCamera said. We, we share the outdoors, golfing, fishing, soccer, and physical fitness. Now, I couldn't retire until I mentioned a few superstars who developed me and mentored me along the way. That elite group of command star majors who were my compass, who gave me direction and motivation, who molded me into who I am today. SEAC John Troxel, SMA Dan Daly, SMA Michael Grinston, Frank the Tank, CSM Frank Grippy, Scott Schroeder, Thomas Capel, Charlie Thorpe, and Ace Vimoto. I'm also extremely fortunate to have been given the opportunity to serve with some of the best commanders in our Army, leaders whom I admire for their competence and corporate leadership. General Paul LaCamera, General Abe Abrams, G Lieutenant General Jim Rainey, Lieutenant General retired Gary Valeski, Major General J.V. Val, Brigadier General Brandon Tegmeyer, and Colonel retired Alan Streeter. My sincere thanks for allowing me to be your right-hand man. I do want to thank Mayor Zhang Jang Sun and retired Lieutenant General Chumminbaum of Piontech for recognizing me with honorary Piontech citizenship. The city of Piontech has indeed helped our service members and their families decide to make Korea as an assignment of choice. Serving in Korea as the, as the Command Sergeant Major in the United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and U.S. Forces Korea has been a once-in-a-lifetime experience. To the Korean people, I say kamsahaminda for sharing your culture, hospitality, and your delicious food. I want to thank God, my wife, Carolyn, my kids, Melanie and Stephanie, and my grandson, Carter, for their unconditional love and support. My mom and dad, Rick and uh, Dee and Rick Monette, they taught me to be kind, have fun, discipline, and responsibility even before the Army. My sister Sheila and my late brother Chris, without them I simply would not be here today in more ways than one. Last but not least, I want to thank uh, my personal team, my front office, who carry the heavy load every single day to prepare me uh, to be successful. But I especially want to recognize Mr. Chong. He literally drove thousands and thousands of miles to get me to my battlefield circulation. And he always got me there on time and safely. Thank you for that. As I reflect on nearly 34 years of marriage and raising children, and even more so now that I'm a grandfather, I know to the core of my heart that our people are truly our most precious resource. Now, as I wrap up my swan song, I want to thank you for all your efforts in your career. You have contributed to the security of our country. But if you remember nothing else from my remarks, then I leave you with this. You cannot put a price on the value of leadership. Think about it. You are actively grooming the future leaders of our military, our communities, our country, and even our world. As leaders, there's only one sure way to show your young service members the right, the right way to live and lead and that's by honorably traveling the path yourself. When life gets hard and even doom seems imminent, your leadership will live on in those you mentor and those who follow your footsteps. To those who are thinking about wearing the uniform serving their country, I say this. You may not have a purpose and family before you sign up for the military, but you certainly get both when you join. It's been a great ride for me and my family, and I'm sure it will be for you as well. God bless our great nation. God bless all of you. Under one flag, Kachi Kapchida, fight tonight.
Ladies and gentlemen, United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and the United States Forces Korea Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Jack H. Love. Anyang Hashmanika. Good morning. General LaCamera, sir, Mrs. LaCamera, fellow uh, other general officers, distinguished visitors, uh, thank you all so much for being here today and for what each of you do every day in the defense of the beautiful and strong Republic of Korea. Special thanks to the 8th Army and Rock Army 7th Corps bands. You make these ceremonies extra special. General Camera, sir, I'm incredibly honored for this opportunity to uh, serve under your command here in the, in the Re Republic of Korea, and more importantly, sir, to get after your priorities each and every day to support our ironclad alliance. Teresa, thank you for what you do every day for our service members and families. To all soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, guardians, special operators, U.S. government and Korean civilian employees and members of the Korean Service Corps. I look forward to training with you, holding each other accountable, and serving with you and your families. I look forward to winning together in everything we do. But today is really about Sergeant Major Tag and Carolyn, and I've also known Tag for many years. He's a phenomenal non-commissioned officer and an even better person. Tag and Carolyn's commitment to the Rock U.S. Alliance and their lifetime of dedicated service to our Army and nation is truly something both remarkable and special. Thank you both for a great transition, enduring friendship, and a fantastic military career. I wish you both the very best as you move on to the next Ranger objective. To my bride of 33 years, Cindy, thank you for enabling me to continue serving. And, uh, you know, she really is the true ranger of our family, and, uh, and I'm uh, blessed, blessed to have her as my wife. We uh, collectively are very proud to carry the torch forward and do what's required to improve our fighting positions each day here in the land of the morning calm. May God continue to bless our alliance and work to protect our nations. Come some the da, under one flag, Kachi Kapshi Da, fight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the retirement of colors. Please remain standing for the plane of the retirement medley honoring Command Sergeant Major Tagalakut's 36 years of service and the Army song.
soldiers never die, never die, never die. All soldiers never die, they just fade away. All soldiers never die, never die, never die. All soldiers never die, they just fade away. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne for old lang syne my dear for old lang syne we'll take a cup of kindness yet for March along, sing our song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. And it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's change of responsibility ceremony. Command Sergeant Major and Mrs. DeGallacude will remain on the reviewing stand for those wishing to say their farewells. Thank you. <laughs>